Something that I am constantly encouraging my students and community members to do is to make time for play and exploration in their art practice. And I think this is especially important for those of you out there who are primarily working with one single drawing or painting medium, or for those of you who struggle with perfectionism and expect yourself to create a polished masterpiece every single time you sit down to draw or paint. I think it's so important that at least from time to time, we explore and play with different mediums, different combinations of mediums, different tools, and or different substrates or papers or surfaces to draw or paint on because this can help open up our horizons as to what we can do. It can help inform our work and it can help enhance those larger pieces that we choose to work on. And because I like practicing what I preach and it's been a while since I've shared one of my own explorations, this week I filmed my process for this drawing that I created on black paper. This is my first drawing that I've ever created on black paper. And I decided to draw a crow because it's October right now and I thought it would be perfect for the season. I used three colored pencils, primarily just white, and as I move along, sharing my thought process and what I did here to arrive at these results, I'm also going to be sharing my key findings that I made on drawing on black paper. All right, with all that said, let's jump in. The first thing that I had to give thought to was how I would be creating my preliminary sketch on my black paper before switching to my colored pencil. I could have just drawn over that black paper freehand with a graphite pencil. However, that line work would be barely visible. So what I decided to do was I created my freehand sketch and pencil in a separate drawing sketchbook. And then I traced over that with a sheet of tracing paper and I used the sheet of tracing paper to do my transferring onto my black paper. I do have a couple of video tutorials where I teach you step-by-step -step how to draw birds freehand and I'll make sure to link to them down below in the text section of this post in case you'd like to check that out. But let's get back into what I did to transfer. Once I was happy with my sketch, I placed a sheet of tracing paper over it. I did my tracing using a 2B pencil pencil. And then what I did was I took that sheet of tracing paper, I flipped it over, I took a piece of white chalk, and I roughly went over the back side or the reverse of my entire sketch, making sure that I was covering the back of all of the line work, the lines, the shapes that I had created for my preliminary sketch. I would recommend if you're going to be using this technique to shake off the remaining dust and little particles of chalk that are left behind on your tracing paper after you're done with this step before moving on to the next. Okay, so here, as you can see, I have the pencil on one side and I have the white chalk on the other. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be placing my tracing paper graphite side up so in the actual direction that I want to do my transferring in, I take my 2B pencil again and I do my tracing over my drawing so that the chalk gets pressed onto the black paper. And this way, I'm going to be left with a white outline sketch on my black paper, which is going to be a lot more visible than gray on black. Before I start doing this final tracing, I do make sure to situate my tracing sheet over my black paper exactly where I want it. And I also make sure to have my non-dominant hand on my tracing paper as I'm doing my tracing so that things don't slide around as I am doing my transferring. So this is the outline sketch that I was left with after doing my transferring. And what I am doing right here is I'm just doing some quick cleanup work with my kneaded eraser. I'm just tapping that kneaded eraser over certain sections in order to get rid of any unnecessary chalk. And here I have switched to my white colored pencil, which is the colored pencil I'm going to be working most with today. And I'm just continuing to refine that outline sketch, maybe completing some sections of lines and shapes that maybe didn't get completely transferred. And I 
I'm even starting to add a little bit more detail to my drawing. Once my outline sketch is ready, it is now time to get started with the development of value and detail in my bird. The first thing that I do is I go over those sections of brightest highlights that I'm able to see in the reference photo with a light application or layer of this white colored pencil. Creating a white shape with this colored pencil in all those highlight areas. Because I'm working on black paper and not white paper, I'm gonna be developing those lightest values by applying more pigment in those highlight areas. And I am leaving that black paper shining through uncovered in darkest value areas. In other words, the black paper is gonna stand in place for our darkest values, our darkest darks. On the other hand, when I am working on white paper, the white paper stands in place for our highlights. So those are the areas that I am leaving uncovered. But this is the inverse of that. My highlight areas are going to be created via a heavier application of white pigment. So more layering, more covering up of that paper. Then the darkest areas are gonna be free of pigment, and then the midtones in between are going to have some amount of white in them. And it's all about controlling the pressure that you're exerting on your white pencil. And simultaneously to this, another thing that you can control is the amount of layering that you do. Even though we're doing the majority of our value development with one single pencil, which is white, there are still variables that you can control in order to make that white look brighter or to make it look less intense. And all it comes down to is the pressure and the layering. So with those key things in mind, I start developing my values and also a little bit of texture throughout this bird. You're going to see me use a couple of different techniques. Sometimes I'm going in and I'm filling in a shape with back and forth motions. And other times I'm going in with little tapered lines and marks where I'm doing quick short flicking motions to help me describe feather texture. When I'm creating those little tapered lines and marks to help me convey that feather texture, I'm making sure to observe that reference photo and to really understand the direction and the length of the feather that I am trying to draw. Both the direction of the feather growth and also the length of these feathers change throughout the bird's body. Even just within the bird's wings, you have feathers that are different lengths. And this is something that I explain in depth in other bird drawing tutorials that I've shared. A lot of the times when it comes to bird wings, in the top of that wing, you have shorter feathers and then they get bigger and bigger as they make their way down that wing. So as I am creating those lines and shapes to help me communicate the feathers, especially in the wing, I have the size and the shape of those feathers in mind and how they change throughout the bird's wing. These shapes and lines can be drawn loosely, but I do want to make sure to have those main characteristics in mind so that my drawing can look believable. I do like bringing in a certain level of looseness and expression into my drawings and paintings. I'm not really going for a carbon copy of what is present in that reference photo or whatever it is that I have in front of myself in real life. However, I do make sure to bring in those important characteristics so that there can be a certain level of realism in my work. And in this case, those feathers are super important. What is the direction of that feather growth? What is the shape of that feather? How large is that feather? Where do I see substantial changes in those feather types throughout the bird's body? And I am making sure that the lines, the marks, the shapes that I am using are helping me communicate that. I need to make sure that I'm constantly observing that reference photo or whatever it is that I have in front of myself in real life. And of course, if we want something to look believable, then proportions and shapes have to be created effectively in our preliminary sketch before moving on to anything else. But I talk much more about that and provide my main techniques that help me arrive at believable shapes and proportions in my other bird drawing tutorials. I continue building these values and these textures 
layering on more white pigment in highlight areas and lighter value areas and applying a very small amount in darker value areas. Throughout this process, you're going to see me constantly bring in my erasers whether it's my regular soft graphite eraser or my kneaded eraser or even my mono zero eraser which if you don't know about the mono zero eraser i cannot recommend it enough if you're into drawing this is a pen or barrel like eraser which allows you to lift up graphite or colored pencil even from very small areas. So the Mono Zero is excellent, for example, to clean up the eye and for narrow sections in those feathers that I want to remove some pigment from. I just continue using these erasers as I see fit to remove some of that excess pigment from certain areas, whether it's because I layered on too much white in dark value areas. And I also go in and erase certain sections of those edges of the bird's body in between the bird's body and the background. This really helps get rid of that outliney look. And also because this is a black bird with black feathers and we're working on black paper, then those darkest shadow areas within the bird's body should disappear and merge into that black background. So it creates a very nice effect. I continue moving forward with these techniques and main ideas in mind and it's really a constant process of adding more white pigment through layering or subtracting white pigment with my erasers and I'm making sure to continue observing that reference photo so that I can remind myself of where those darkest areas are so that I can avoid going into those areas with my white colored pencil. It's very important that I continue seeing everything as a whole and that I don't get too immersed or focused in one single area. Coming back and seeing everything as a whole is very important and really helps me avoid overworking the piece. The awesome thing about working on toned paper or black paper or paper of other colors that isn't white is that it actually speeds up the drawing or the sketching process. And the reason this is, is because depending on the color of that paper, whether it's a toned paper that is a mid-tone gray or mid-tone beigey brown color, or a black paper like this one, it's gonna automatically stand in place for a certain value, whether it's a mid-tone value or a very dark value. And so you don't have to go into those areas to do very much work at all. And we want to incorporate that paper as part of the piece. We don't wanna go in and cover everything up. If we go in and cover everything up, it would kind of be defeating the purpose of working on paper that has a different color to it it. And we can also get rid of that kind of interesting atmospheric mood that working on paper with different colors can bring. And it can be hard not to do this, especially if we're not used to working on toned paper or black paper. It requires kind of a mental switch because we're doing the inverse of what we would be doing when we're working on white paper. Something that really helps me is acknowledging those main darkest value areas and main lightest value areas before getting started with the coloring process. Making sure that I understand where I'm gonna be doing the majority of that layering and where I wanna make sure that I don't go in at all. The mid-tones can be worked on as I go. And when you're just getting started with these types of papers, another thing that I would recommend is working monochromatically with one single color, the way that I'm doing here right now, or working with a limited range of colors. Okay, so I'm almost done with my white colored pencil. I'm pretty happy with how everything is looking. And if I continue, adding more of this white i can really overwork this piece i already think that i have added too much to be honest especially in the head 
And I'm also pretty happy with the texture that I've managed to create with those different types of lines and marks. At this point, I decide to bring in a couple of other colors to add more interest and personality to the piece. First, I bring in a bright yellow, and this is Canary Yellow from my Prismacolor set, and I'm gonna be filling in those background areas around the bird in order to create a little bit of a vignette style background and really brighten up the piece. I knew that yellow would be a great option for the color for my background because it's a very light color and it will really contrast with that black. You're going to notice that I always start right along the edge of the bird's body and I make my way out from there, exerting less and less pressure as I make my way out and away from the bird. This makes that yellow look more intense and brighter nearest the bird and it looks less and less bright or darker and darker as it makes its way out. Right here, I'm doing a little bit of more layering with my yellow in order to soften some of that sketchy uh, texture left behind by the pencil. But I do like that sketchiness. I am trying to embrace it as part of the piece. I'm not trying to get rid of it completely. And once I'm done with this layering with my yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and switch on back to my white, and I'm gonna be doing a little bit more layering with my white over certain sections of my yellow, especially nearest the bird. This helps lighten those areas even more and helps integrate the bird with the background. And the last thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be bringing in an extra color and I go with a blue. I do make sure to pick a blue that is kind of a medium blue, meaning not too dark and not too light. And this one is Peacock Blue for my Prismacolor set especially because I wanna use this blue in mid-tone sections where I have transition spots between my lightest values where I have my white and darkest values where I have my black paper showing through. I don't wanna bring in a super light blue because I already have my light values created with my white and I don't wanna bring in a super dark blue like an indigo because I have my black paper for my darkest values. So this is why I decided to go with a medium blue and I just add it here and there for a hint of an extra color. I try not to go overboard with this one, less is more. I'm really looking forward to continuing to experiment with both toned paper and black paper and developing and honing my process for drawing and sketching on these types of papers more so that I can not only improve my artwork but also create more classes and tutorials for you. Did you enjoy this tutorial? I really, really hope you did and if so, Make sure to check out everything that I am offering over at my Patreon membership website because for a very small amount a month, you're gonna get immediate access to my exclusive tutorials, classes, and resources that I don't share anywhere else. All of these exclusive tutorials include my downloadable outline sketches so that you don't have to start from scratch, reference photos, and my supply lists. There's already a library of over 75 sketching and watercolor painting tutorials that are real time, meaning they are not sped up or edited. They are fully narrated and I take you through my entire process, making sure to explain everything as clearly as possible step by step. Two new exclusive full length tutorials are added into this exclusive library every single month. For those of you who are interested in really taking your artwork to the next level and want to know all of the inside secrets that I learned about in art school and courses that I've invested in myself, there's also a full library on classes on art fundamentals in which all of the bases are covered. That library has now over 35 classes and workshops 
all have assignments at the end that help you actually put your knowledge to the test. And there's a brand new class or workshop added at the beginning of every single month. As if all of this weren't enough, you also get a weekly sketchbook prompt sent to your inbox to help you stay consistent with your art practice. There's a live training, workshop, or paint along session with me every single month. Members in the $15 tier and upwards get access to thorough feedback from me on their work whenever they need it, and much, much more. There are different tiers that you can join that give you access to different things, which you can choose from depending on your goals and needs needs. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to make sure to leave a link where you can find out more down below in the description box of this video. And I would love, love, love to get to know more about you and your work and have you join this innermost art community of mine. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.